paid a lot of money to come here and learn how to be an outstanding teacher. Please forget all this advice because I'm going to tell you what to do in order to improve your teaching skills, fine hone and polish them to a very high level. Now forget about rapport. This is what people tell you. You were not paid to create a warm and fuzzy wuzzy atmosphere. You were not paid to, you, you're not a, a barrel of laughs, you're not the class clown. You're there to instruct, to teach, to test, to ask questions. So forget about the feeling of fun and games. Gamification, this is just a trend, it's a fashion. And you should do what you were hired to do, which is to teach a language. This is grammar and vocabulary. And you don't need to laugh while doing it. You don't need to play games. Spread anxiety. <laughs> Be impatient, tuck your foot, set time limits, ask your students to hurry up, interrupt them as much as you can. <laughs> Stephen Crusher never taught teenagers, so what does he know? Threaten <laughs> them with anything in your powers to deliver as threats. 500 lines, no copy paste, in, delivered by, you know, written by hand, um, you know, sit in the corner, um, stay grounded, do extra homework, whatever you can. Test them often. Test them every month. Test them every week. Test them every Monday. Uh, Cambridge should create tests for toddlers. <laughs> and I have no idea why they have not done that yet. But I think they will soon because there's a huge market for that. Spread some confusion. It's not your job to train your learners to be teachers of English, so you don't need to tell them the aims of the lesson or the learning intentions, as we have been taught to do, to do in high demand teaching, and do some differentiation work. In other words, mix, match, and match your shy learners <clears throat> with the loudest, most domineering ones, because they need some input, some exposure to English, they wouldn't have anything interesting to say anyway. <laughs> so put them together. Um, you're paid to do one hour of lesson preparation. So giving the learners choice is giving you extra work. <laughs> so I do it. Just tell them what it is to do. You are, you know, the leader. You tell them how to grow and you just beat the rhythm. No, it's Avoid oh, yeah. eye contact. <laughs> Too much eye contact breeds contempt. <laughs> do something useful. They're doing a, a gap for your exercise, do your knitting, <laughs> clean some beams, uh, prepare next week's lesson, but you know, don't be uh, in there. Stay still, sit still, sit behind your desk. <laughs> this is where students should be able to find you if they need to look for you. Stop <laughs> roaming around the room like a wheelie dervish. What is this? If you need to move, pounce. <laughs> Keep them on their toes. Spread a little bit more anxiety. And if by mistake you have given them some pair work, but in. <laughs> and tell them some choice episodes of your love life, maybe. <laughs> uh, pay attention to people who are your good students, your pets, and who bring you gifts of diamonds and gold, not apples. <laughs> who needs apples? <laughs> Just a little bit of blink. Never hurt anyone. Keep your voice up. Uh, modulation and whispering. What is this? You know, interrupt everybody. If you're talking to someone, everybody should listen. Because every word that ex escapes your lips is a pearl of wisdom. <laughs> and everyone should be able to hear it. Being fair is also something else that people say. Of course, be fair to the people who do hard work. Ask the most difficult questions of those students who are lazy bones. You know, ask them the rules, ask them the passive voice, or the ex 
exceptions, the morphological rooms, rules, the good students, especially the ones who bring the gifts, should be left alone. <laughs> when learners make mistakes, uh, tell them the truth. You're giving them the wrong information when you praise them for the effort. What do you mean, you know? Well done for trying. Uh, make some jokes about the low IQ as well, if you can. Uh, because that will motivate them. Uh, you don't, you didn't study diplomacy. Call your students children, uh, especially if they're adults. And don't be afraid to be direct and, you know, tell them what's what. Feedback is another area where you need to allow for an air of mystery. All this detailed feedback leaves you responsible for being accurate about it and you don't have really a lot of time to do that. So give it an air of confusion of mystery hieroglyphics. All the technology that you need is right behind you. <laughs> it's big, it's green, it's scratchy. <laughs> It makes a noise, it keeps them alert, <laughs> and you can draw the, the chalk on the board. And if you want more gems of wisdom and training so that you can be outstanding, I am a teacher trainer and I run courses, <laughs> so you can, come, you can come to my centre and I can tell you a lot more good stuff like this so that you too can become outstanding.